there's so much in the Bible, like revelation wise, that you need to really read for yourself and really ask God for understanding. And we don't do that enough in the churches. Like we just want to say that Jesus just touched. He touched, he touched, he touched. You know, miracles were just happening. And, I, and, you know, as a society, you know, if you're only focused on miracles, like people never really improve or grow because they don't really understand the lesson. Um, my real name is Adora, yes. And Lumina is my rap name. What does Lumina mean? Uh, Lumina means bright light. So it basically just means, you know, a light, a positive light that shines. It comes from the, the word luminary, which basically means um, a bright light that inspires people. That's an interesting question. Um, so I've always been, you know, very, I've been a multi-potentialite. So I'm one of those people who expresses purpose using different mediums. Um, and so I don't restrict myself to a specific industry or a specific platform. And so even with my company, that's why it's a group of companies, right? It's because we started off in one space and then, you know, found ourselves moving into different other spaces. And that's very reflective of my personality. Um, and so music, you know, for me is just another medium of expression, right? Um, same, same foundation, which is, um, again, you know, purpose at the center. Um, that's my philosophical heartbeat, as I like to call it, um, and, but different mediums of expression. You know, I, I, again, I just also believe one of the key things that has sort of guided my life is I really just believe like time is a great storyteller. Um, and I think that, you know, there's always time for, for different things. Um, and I have been doing music for a very long time, actually, just not publicly. I've done it in the background. So I've, I've always recorded um, for myself, <laughs> you know, but this is, I, I think, you know, for me, it was just a natural transition. It was a progression, you know, where I just felt like I was ready to express that part of me. And so I started to do it more publicly um, in recent times. Um, and, and yes, you know, so I, I think that, you know, just in general, we have boxed ourselves into people who do God centric music have boxed themselves into that gospel space. And so they create music for Christians, gospel musicians create music for Christians. You know, um, I don't create music for Christians as my primary focus. I create God centric music, but my music is not just for, you know, Christians. And that's why I don't say that I'm a gospel rapper, right? Because there are people who listen to my music who are not in the Christian community. Um, my music is more conscious music, conscious messaging. Um, yes, I talk about God in so, on so, some of my tracks um, because he's the center of, well, I'm not going to say he's not the center, he's the center of everything that I do. But, um, but this music is really, again, you know, how can we take God-centric music to what we call secular stages? And that's really, you know, what I'm doing. So I wouldn't call myself a gospel rapper at all. I mean, we're musicians, you know, everyone's in the music space. I actually feel like genre is very limiting. You know, when you say, oh, this is my genre and that's like all I do, um, that's a limit. Music is just like art. It's supposed to be an expression, right, of your feelings, of your emotions, of your soul, you know. And when you say you're in a genre, like, I know we do it for commercial purposes, um, you know, but I've decided that I'm just going to disrupt the space by being who I am without a box. <laughs> so I think that, you know, the state of Christianity really, I think we've just sort of focused more on religion, like you said, than spirituality, right? And Christianity is very deeply rooted in spirituality oh, and God. Um, I'll, I'll go there. Okay. I'll go there with what I'm saying. Um, and so you have a lot of people who say, I'm a Christian, but I'm a Christian by um, birthright. So <laughs> let me put it that way. Like if you want to, or naturalization, if you want like citizenship, right? Because my parents are Christians, I'm a Christian. So I'm going to church. My parents started taking me to church when I was a kid. So I'm just a Christian, you know, and I don't really believe that that's Christianity, right? I believe like you have to have a personal encounter um, with God, right, and really understand his precepts. And when you 
when you talk about the Bible, so my opinion of Christianity can be very controversial. I'll be very honest with you. Like, um, when you talk about the Bible, for instance, right, if you read the Bible deeply from a theological point of view and also from a spiritual point of view and you understand revelation, right, what usually happens is that in Nigeria, Christianity in Nigeria, we focus on the miracle part of things, right? So we focus on God as a miraculous God, God as God of prosperity. But if you really read the accounts of the guys in the Bible, the Davids, the Josephs, you know, um, the Jobs and all of these guys, God was not always a nice God. <laughs> you know, that's the reality. It wasn't always about the miracles. You know, there were lessons that people were being taught, right? And so I think that we've sort of lost that in, ch in churches today is we have gone away from the moral lessons, right? We're not teaching that enough, right? So when you talk about, I mean, recently I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, um, and we're talking about, you know, the feeding when, you know, Jesus Christ called the little boy, and the, when the little boy, you know, decided that he was going to feed the 5,000, right? The story in general is that we say feeding of the 5,000, we say Jesus just shit turned. It's like Jesus just touched the fish, touched the loaf, and the thing just multiplied to 5,000. You know, we're having a conversation about how, it was technically impossible to have 5,000 people that were going on a journey and nobody was carrying food, right? Chances of that happening is very slim. So our conversation was that perhaps if you look at it the other way is that you had people who were going on this journey, some people had food, some people didn't have food, right? By this little boy giving his own food, Jesus Christ used that example to teach other people that were within that space to share their food. And that's how 5,000 people got fed. They got fed because people learned the lesson and decided that, you know, I'm going to share my food too. If this boy can share his food, I'll share my food. That's and that's how 5,000 people got fed versus Jesus touched it and the thing multiplied into 5,000. Do you get what I'm saying? So I feel like there's so much in the Bible like revelation wise that you need to really read for yourself and really ask God for understanding and we don't do that enough in the churches like we just want to say that Jesus just touched he touched he touched he touched you know miracles were just happening and I and you know as a society you know if you're only focused on miracles like people never really improve or grow because they don't really understand the lesson you know imagine if we were teaching the truth and the lessons um, how much more society would have improved by now you know so so I mean so my my in summary my thoughts are you know that people need to find out Christianity for themselves and just religion in general like um, or spirituality in general you know regardless of what religion you are um, and we need to just be tolerant of people's different um, backgrounds and you know what people's belief systems are I'm very tolerant too, as in you know I'm extremely tolerant um, my, my my mother my mother and my mother's entire family was Buddhist so and then I married a Muslim so <laughs> I, so I'm very tolerant I completely understand um, different backgrounds right you know for me one primary challenge is Sorry, I love media people, but because I've been in the media. Um, but I, I really think like one of my challenges has been media. And that's why this conversation just is very, um, it's very interesting to me because I really don't get questions like this. Um, I've been on several interviews, you know, and I feel like sometimes the journalists just sort of put you in a box of what they believe that a musician is, a musician should be, a Nigerian artist, a Nigerian musician. Um, and so the questions are very tailored towards a specific type of person, right? Um, and I'm not necessarily that type of person, you know? Um, not like there's anything wrong, you know? But what I'm saying is they're not, they don't focus on the individual that they're interviewing or that they're talking to, you know? And so when they paint a picture of you, right, it always feels like that's not me and that's not what we talked about, <laughs> right? Um, so I really think the media has a big role to play in just supporting people and you know positioning people as they are versus as they think that they should be positioned, right? Um, and so even in that same light, um, you know, is even just appearance is like you know when you're when you're a female musician, it's like everyone tells you sometimes, oh, you know, if you just dress like this 
or look like it, you blow faster. Um, <laughs> you know, so, so some of that, some of that, you know, can be discouraging, um, especially if you're trying to stay true to who you are. Um, you know, but I think, you know, again, just in general, it's just, it's a, it's a grind. The Nigerian music industry and just, the I've been in the industry for a very long time on the back end, um, you know, in the, ba in the past. And so I, I sort of understand it to a certain extent, and maybe it's a little bit different for me to navigate. But um, I think that, you know, the structure, the absence of structures, um, you know, are a big challenge as well. You sort of, as a musician, you sort of have to find your own way and your own routes um, to market. But thank God for digital media. This is where like I have to bring out the swag and things, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, okay, um, you can you can check out my website first of all. You know, it's luminaworld.com. I share a lot of amazing stuff on there. Um, you can follow me on at adora.lumina um, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, you know, just hit me up and let's chat. Listen to my music on SoundCloud. It's just Lumina. I'm on iTunes, Spotify. Um, pretty much all the music platforms.